Okay. I don't know how much I'm getting there. <laughs> Um, you can the do that if you want to. The yeah. Okay, guys, we are going to do a quick, uh, while she's doing that, we're going to do a quick prayer request. Um, you don't have to be specific uh, because we're already got the camera rolling. So, um, so just say, like, my mom. You don't have to give any details, okay? Your mom? Anybody else? Your grandma. Um, I have uh, my family uh, uh, had a loss of a wonderful, wonderful fella. I never got to meet him. He's like fifth cousin or something. But so for my family. Um, and I'm gonna also um, go ahead and bless the food. And um, the lady who uh, was who fixed everything up for us. You know, if you ever, if you guys had one of those days. <laughs> Where just that explains it all. Everything, well, not everything hurts, everything. Anyway, she had one of those days. Brown cheese, slam cookies. You know what, though? I started praying, God. Just how um, Jesus, we haven't gotten into this yet, but Jesus, I'll wait till we get into this. But I prayed for her. I said, God, give me a moment, give me an opportunity. Mr. Hunter, listen. Give me a moment, give me an opportunity to. Um, uh, just use my mouth to tell her that you love her somehow. And so it was interesting. I struggled to get up out of the bench I was sitting waiting on it. And she saw, I think she, she must have saw that. And I think that that kind of melted her heart just enough. And then she was helping me carry things out. And I, I said, no, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. And that moment of, uh, that was what melted her heart enough to say, I'm doing something for this person. And it made me cry. And I told her, I promised her that when we say grace over the food, you know, we say bless the hands that made it. So I told her, I said, it's going to be your hands that we're going to ask for. And she just smiled. And she had a good, so God used my mouth to somehow tell her that she's loved. And that's a great opportunity. So I'm feeling really, really, really bad today. So that means will be shorter. <laughs> so I need you to be on your bestest behavior. And I will cry. It's not because I'm sad. It's just one of those emotionally yeah. raw because I'm so painful. This is not normal. <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. No details. For your mom and dad. Okay, all right. We're going to say prayer. Mr. Hunter, what do we do when we say prayer? What do we not do? <laughs> Christians tend to know exactly what we don't do. <laughs> what do we not do during prayer? We not be loud. No, we not be loud. In, uh, after class. Um, don't let me forget. And also don't let me forget, if you had perfect tense all summer, you get to pick a monkey or a bear. So you guys get to take your monkey or bear home with you today. Yes, ma'am. We didn't get up there. We put her name up there too. Yep. Yep. Help her spell it. Yeah. J A Y. J A Y. Okay. And And who? Okay. Alright guys, we're quiet during prayer. We always bow our head. You can keep your eyes open, close, you can stand, you can kneel. I don't care as long as we're quiet, we bow our heads. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to just to be the mouth that tells your word, that shows tells another one, it reaches their ears to let them know that they are loved by you and that they need you. And I pray that same thing for Brother that's preaching today. I ask, Lord, that you just simply use his mouth to reach their ears. And it's up to them whether they accept or reject you and your word. And I just pray to Heavenly Father that you will be with each and every one. They will realize that you love them, that they need you, and that, um, uh, that, that, that they can be used by you in the same kind. I pray for the food that we're about to eat. I ask that you bless it. Lord, that we'll, all the nutrients in it, our bodies will absorb. And I thank you for it, Lord. And I ask that you bless those hands that made it. 
bless that young lady who made those. And whatever is going on in her heart, you know exactly what it is. And you alone can touch that space. And I ask for that. And I ask that you be with the moms and dads who um, have been requested prayer for. Lord, it's heavy on the children's hearts. And I ask that you move in that situation, Lord. You are powerful to change things. And I thank you, dear God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Okay. All righty. Um, some of you guys, do you remember last week, the lesson that we had? What all did we do? It was about Jesus calms the storm. Oh, I wish, I wanted you guys here. I know you had to be away for your class. Okay, hold on. Let, let me interrupt. I just got to finish that now. Kids, you're being taped. So your parents are going to see if you're bad. And if you're in here pounding or making noise, it's going to pick up on the camera and they won't be able to hear Sister Missy. And it's very important what she's doing because she wants to put it online so the kids that can't get out and come to church can see this lesson too, okay? Which remind me, I want to give you guys the DVD of that, um, that lesson so you get to watch it, yep. Yep. And I'm trying very hard to get it on uh, YouTube and Facebook technically challenged, so <laughs> I'm trying really hard. And uh, we have some up there that people have really responded to. So you know what this is? Yes, you guys are, this is part of a ministry. Yes, because you know what? I have lost family who are watching this, and that gives me so much courage. So I thank you guys for being part of that. Yes, sir? Uh, you could try to bring it on Snapchat. Ew, I should... I, any of you guys who know how to do this here kind of stuff, get with me afterwards. I need help. <laughs> it takes hours to try to put up one video. So I am so thankful that you guys are part of this ministry. And I really, I'd like to, what we record here, what we do here, to, for the adults out there. Because sometimes they don't know who in the world is Jehoshaphat. <laughs> yes, jumping Jehoshaphat. And I, that, that's really cool. So they would like to know these things in a simple way. So anyway, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys are a part of this ministry that we're trying to get going. Not just for you guys, but for other people. So last Sunday, what did, how did we make that storm? We, re, we had a storm right here in this room. What did we do? Oh, we squirted them in the face with water. <laughs> We did. I would apologize for that, but it was incredibly fun. And realistic. You got in the storm, right? They got wet. Not only did they get wet, the whole boat filled up with water. We had like, like you guys had like a tarp in your front or mm -hmm. We had that sheet, we flagged, and it made much like a wind sound, didn't it? So we, we had the wind, the tarp, or the sheet over top, and we had the sun going by, the clouds, and it turned black clouds. We hit it with lightning bolts. Yes. The wave. And the sound. Oh, I had the sound effects. I had a, a sound effects. I put it in this here tin thing so it really roared. It was really cool. What else did we do last night? What, what did we do when you guys were in the boat? Did you? Okay, go ahead. Waves, yes. We did this where we, we, we made the waves pick up and that was when we squirted them in the face. And what was we screaming? Or I was doing most of the screaming. We're gonna what? We're gonna die! So, and Jesus was asleep. Yes, and Jesus was asleep during this whole thing. We had somebody play Jesus. And she was asleep in the boat because she was representing Jesus. Jesus was asleep. What did the disciples ask Jesus? They got their question in. Not yet, but what did they? Yes, the, so the disciple went and woke Jesus up because the boat was filling up. And he asked, so they asked him a question, a logical question. Be, yeah, do you even care? Because we're going to die. And Jesus asked, but see, I, Jesus often answered people's questions with a question. What did he ask them? First of all, why were you? Uh, what? He first asked, why were you what? what? Why were you scared? Do you even care? Yes. Yes. I think we should pay attention to the questions Jesus asked the people in the Bible. Because we often, I mean, I, I, I am not the only one I'm sure that's ever asked, Jesus, don't you even care? Don't you even care that this is happening to me? And um, he asked, asked, the question that he asked the disciples is the question I know that he would ask me. And that is, can you put your dolly down? She probably wants to take a swim. 
And Mr. Hunter, keep your hands. Can you do that and not fall off the boat? Let's see. Put your hands over. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, <coughs> We, uh, so Jesus asks, I always, I, sometimes I've had that question. It's not very often, but when things are really bad, Jesus, don't you even care? And if he, he, and he, but he looked at them and said, why were you afraid? And I'm like, okay, lightning, clouds, can't see a thing, the boat, do you not feel this? <laughs> and the look on their faces of terror. These were professional fishermen. They knew that there was something about the storm that was not normal. And we're going to get to this, our next lesson, and we're going to get to, there was a very important reason as to why that storm came about. There was a very important reason why Jesus wanted to cross the other side. We're going to get to that next Sunday. Um, I love the fact that the storm had purpose, you know, and uh, all of our storms, everything we go through, even what we call bad, there's a purpose. You know what, Jesus used my pain this morning to, re to touch someone else, and I said, God, you, that, that I will stay in pain. This life is short. Use it however it takes. Um, Miss Jada, please put your doll down. <clears throat> I don't want her to drown. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, and Jesus said, why were you afraid? But then his next question explained why he asked that first question. What was that question again? Jesus asked, Do you trust me? Don't you trust me? And you know what? I trust that Jesus has complete control of my life. He has control over my body. What is there is because of his purpose. I don't understand it. I don't have to. But that's a great question. Where is, don't you trust me? Do you trust me when you say, pray for my mom that I'm going to? And do you trust me when you say, pray for my grandma that he has the ability to touch her body and make her better? Don't you even trust me? And that, when that question pierces my heart, because when things are going in my life, I have to say, I have to answer that question. And my answer is yes, I trust you. And therefore, I can see the storm, I can see the lightning, I can feel the waves, but what I see and what I feel is not the truth. Jesus and his word is the truth. And that is, he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. So can we trust Jesus? What do you say? Yes, we can trust you. So, very good. That is an excellent job. Please take note. He can keep his hands together and not drown. No, like that. Oh, like that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Guess what we have waiting for us after the lesson? Subway. Who wants, who's hungry? Is it just, okay. All right, so if you guys keep your ears open and we get through the lesson, because you know, we will skip Subway, we will skip everything. I'm getting my lesson in, right? So let's get, get the lesson, let's get this. And then we can get to Subway. And then if we have time, I have a game that I want to play. Yes, he did get a haircut. It looks nice, doesn't it, Sadie? Yeah. Yeah. Sadie says you guys look very nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we are going to do our lesson and then hopefully play a game because that's not something that we get to do very often. So I'm going to keep it shorter and simpler, Lord willing. All right, so the last time that we left this lesson, uh, Jesus stood up in the boat and he said... After he said, don't you even trust me, he said what? Uh, what changed everything when Jesus said? It was waves, be still, peace. Peace? Be still. He didn't have to stop to just the waves. When he said, peace, be still, everything that was not peaceful and everything that was not still was peaceful and still. And I believe even the disciples, their hearts became peaceful and still. Because he has to be specific when he declares something. Like when he rose late, Lazarus, we're going to talk about that. He, Lazarus was dead and they moved away the stone. He had to say, Lazarus, come out. Or all of them would have come out. When Jesus stood on that boat and said, peace be still, it, he was speaking to everything that was not peaceful and everything that was not still. And it all went. So we cut off, like we, yet we cut off the sound, we cut off the waves, nothing was moving. And so everything was peaceful and still. Like if Jesus had said that, 
even Hunter there would be 